Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you everything I've done to my 2004 Chevy Colorado in a thousand mile review. I've had this truck for a few months now, since around February. It is now June. So I think I've had it long enough to say a few things about it, what I think of it, and show you a few things that I've done to it so far. The specs of this truck, it's a 2004 Chevy Colorado LS Z71 4x4 has the 355 or Vortec 3500 inline five cylinder. It's a 3.5 liter. I believe it generates around 220 horsepower and 235 foot pounds of torque. Brand new from the factory. It's the automatic transmission with the four to 10 gear ratio. That's the main specs of this truck. It also has a three inch lift, shackles in the back and torsion bar crank in the rear. Other than that, that's the main base stats of the truck. We're gonna start front to back. And the first thing being the Chevy emblem, the bow tie here. It was normally like a silver and it did not match well with the truck and just was faded and it did not look right. So I took it off and spray painted it and I didn't think it'd make a huge difference, but it really did. This is 100% something you should do to your truck if you've got a black aesthetic going on or even just any color. You can see everything kind of matches together, especially with that tie in there. It really just wraps it all up nicely. Have a don't tread on me front plate that kind of matches with the whole black and chrome white aesthetic with the detailed rattler on there. It's different from the Gadsden style flag, but it it definitely matches the aesthetic of the truck better. Got a black chain between the two tow hooks right here. It needs to be repainted, but it's there for functionality and aesthetically, mainly aesthetically. We've got LEDs where the fog lights were. Those were wired up to the main switch where the stock fog lights were. I painted the fender flares. They were faded. Someone had painted them previously and did not do a good job. So I got a matte black can of, I believe it was uh, Rust-Oleum, the other expensive can, other expensive brand of spray paint. It was the matte. And it was the double finish, so it was like extra coating. So I think those turned out pretty nice. The truck's really dirty right now. I need to wash it. My wheels here are American Racing five-spoke blade wheels. 15-inch by, I believe, seven and a half, maybe eight. I'm running Goodyear Wrangler Authority 31-1050 R15 mud tires. I still have quite a bit of life in them. At some point, I am going to go to 33s when these wear out, but these definitely have plenty of life left. I try and run them around anywhere between 35 and 40 PSI, closer to 40 if I can. The shocks up front are Skyjacker Hydro 7000 lift shocks. They're 3 to 5 inch lift shocks. And this is the best investment I've made on my truck so far because of the torsion bar lift. It stretches the original shocks to where they have no play, and this truck is going to ride horribly. It rode horribly when I got it. And I waited way too long to get these shocks, even though it didn't actually take me that long. But it's such so worth the money. These things were like $120. If I were you, I'd spend the $175 or $180 and get the full set for front and rear. I haven't gotten the rear yet because I just couldn't spend all the money at one time. But I definitely plan on getting them for the rear also. I also want a grill guard or some sort of brush guard up here. I'm not a huge fan of the like $150 ones that come up from the bottom, go over and go down. That's just not enough for me. I don't think it adds enough structure to the front. I want a grill guard, the type that comes off, like the generic eBay ones are like $260. It comes over the lights. However, they say those don't work on the 4x4 or two-wheel drive Z71 models because of the front sway bar. I have to look into that because I really want one of those bumpers, and they're not all that expensive. I do want to get Nerf bars, like 3-inch chrome Nerf bars with black grips or just black chrome bar, excuse me, black Nerf bars, which is black rubber grips. I think they do a lot. There's not too much to look at on the side of the truck here. Inside, I'm not going to do a tutorial of what all I keep in my truck, but I added a CB in here. It's got a Bluetooth radio. It's like a $40 radio from Walmart, but it gets the job done. There's a CB that's been mounted up. I've got this cup holder in here for extra stuff. I'll also have this cup holder. Nothing crazy going on the inside. It's got a steering wheel cover because the original one was kind of peeling. And there's the back. Not super clean right now. Like I said, this isn't a video about 
my truck and what I keep in it. I will do a video like that if y'all are interested. There's not a whole lot in the back here now. There's not a whole lot over there. The floorboards are a little dirty, but I use it a lot. It does have Kenwood speakers up front. They're under this mesh thing there. I honestly don't know what the stock speakers were, but it does have Kenwood speakers. I think they sound pretty good. I do need to get rain guards for the front because the original ones have come off. That's going to be one of my next upgrades. Moving on, I have a 42 inch curved LED light bar. This is a 560 watt light bar I got off eBay. It was, I think, $40, but the only thing that came with was two wires that come off the bottom here, a red and a black, and no sort of switch, wiring, relay, nothing at all like that. So it was a cheaper, cheaper light bar. I definitely would recommend one that comes with a wiring harness if you can, because it's definitely worth it. It runs off the light bar, comes down. I've got it merged into some loom here. It goes in the back of the truck through this little panel. It goes around, comes through here, comes, my glasses fell out. Comes through here, goes under here, goes up through the floorboard and up through the firewall. I can make a separate video on that detailing how I did that if you're interested right here is my contico extreme tough storage bin these trucks don't have a whole lot of space to keep stuff especially the extra cab and single cab models i got this at tractor supply for about 130 dollars it wasn't the one i wanted the one i wanted was shallower and was farther away so you couldn't really see it merging about the bed of the truck but it hit these fender wells because there's not a whole lot of space so I had to go with this one, but it is made in the USA, or at least it says it is. It's just got kind of a cheap locking mechanism here. But I keep a toolbox, a net, fishing stuff in here. Definitely recommend bolting it to the bed so no one can just haul it off and steal it. I mean, you can put locks right here. I'm happy with it. I think it, the little price is $130. So it might be worth finding a used small toolbox on Marketplace or Craigslist if you can. Up here we have my roll bar slash gla back glass protector. It's got two of these protectors to keep somebody in case like a piece of wood gets thrown up. It's going to block it, a shovel, stuff like that. At least that's what it's intended for. I also have a CB mount up here with my fire stick CB antenna. It's got the spring so it doesn't hit anything. Got these tabs for bed lights if I if need be. I might have the light bar up here on these tabs. If you do get a light bar for these trucks, I originally wanted to mount it above the windshield like most, but this light bar is not long enough. I read somewhere where it would be, but I definitely recommend a 46 to 48 inch light bar for these trucks. This one is curved. It's a curved 42 inch. So I don't know what difference that makes, but I definitely recommend a longer light bar because it's going to look weird if you don't have one up front. That's shorter than 46 inches i'd say that's my main back glass protector i custom made that with my dad from a 1500 back glass protector so there's not a whole lot of these out there you're not just gonna see these on a lot of trucks but it makes my truck unique from most other people's so that's definitely a plus sorry right about that so it does have a dent here in the side. I didn't do that. Some of the previous owners did that. In case you're wondering what the gleam was. This is an LED third brake light. You can still see it with this on here. But it does block it a little bit. In the middle it's red. On the sides it's white. And you can hit the button and wire it in. So you hit the button and it'll make these little bed lights. Nothing crazy. I need a bed liner for it. Or I'd like a bed liner for it. Nothing crazy on the bed here. It's really rough. I got a broom reason a stick and a couple fishing poles back here because i like to fish there's nothing crazy in the bed here until i get a bed liner i also have some flags mounted as you can see i have a separate video on how i mounted the flags without drilling holes in the bed so please check that out i says the z71 4x4 i have a smoked plate protector like 
one of those that dims it out just for the black aesthetics. I'm not going to show the plate, but it was like $7 on Amazon. I'd recommend it. I also plan on getting new smoked taillights to go for the, the dark theme. I don't black out the badges. I don't like it when people do that. Somebody, the preview center did do that, and I undid it. Because it irritates me when people black out the badges or take them off, but it's just personal preference. These lights had a problem with the clear coat fading and like peeling, and that's happened to these really bad. So I plan on getting some smoke tail lights. They're like $70. I think the regular ones are 60, so it's worth it for me to have the smoked ones. Just because that's the one I'm inside I prefer. It does have the toe hitch on it since it's this specific model. Now the back shocks, that one's money because the shock cover's kind of messed up on it. But I did spray paint them white, so from the back of the stoplight or whatever, you can't tell that they aren't the Skyjacker shocks, like, up front. So, it's kind of cheesy, I know. But until I get regular back ones, this is how it's going to be. I shouldn't have the stock ones on there too long. But hopefully I'm going to get the same type of shocks I got for the front. Now, Engine modifications. This truck doesn't have a whole lot. I got new iridium spark plugs right after I got it. It is straight piped here. And it's really not even that loud. I had a Flowmaster Flow FX muffler on it. It just didn't deliver the sound I wanted. So straight piping it is honestly not that much louder. And it sounds pretty good. So I would definitely recommend straight piping it. If your state allows that or I, mean, I don't condone it if your state doesn't allow it but some people can get away with it torsion bars up front are cranked i'll give you a look at the engine even though there's really not that much special going on with it see if i can do this with one hand here for the bad camera angles i already did that one-handed i says the inline five it's the 3.5 liter 2007 they changed it to a 3.7 liter and a 2.8 liter for the four cylinder instead of 2.5 or 2.8 i believe it was no i'm sorry i told you wrong i believe they changed it from 2.8 to 2.9 on the four cylinder it's not a huge difference there it doesn't burn any oil uh at least if it does it's not enough to even show on the stick to where because I check it a lot and nothing ever changes. The air box, I did take the little bridge intake piece between the fender well and the air box was very restrictive. It's only like that big around, whereas the hole's like this. So I took that out. I cleaned the mass airflow sensor and throttle body. I'll have a video on that if you want to see it. Here's where all the relays wire in and the CB to the battery. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I'm working on that. It's got these LED headlights here. I need to clean the bottom ones. But other than that, there's really not a whole lot going on with this truck. Besides what I showed you that I haven't mentioned so far. If they are just little things that aren't even worth mentioning. I showed you most of the main stuff that I'd recommend doing. I would definitely recommend the shocks if you can. If you're into sound, I'd mess with the exhaust a little bit. It's hard to get a good sound out of these trucks because... There's not a whole lot of things you can do to make them sound like they're big engines because they're really not. Whether you're straight piping or maybe a Flowmaster 40 series would be what I'd go for. But there you have it. Any questions, please ask. I'll get to them in the comments. Let me know. I'll, I answer pretty quickly. Try to answer every comment I get. So if you have any tips or things you see I'm doing wrong or any way you'd be able to fit that bumper on there that I was talking about I'd like to get, let me know. Alrighty, y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching.